what we're going to be looking at in this session is some general and technical specialized products in the Lixor frame. Some of the ones that we're going to be looking at are loose key taps, demand taps, metering valves, thermostatic mixers, and then electronic taps and mixers. The first one we're looking at is a loose key tap, and we see it so called because it has a removable handle and it is available in 15 and 20 millimeter heavy patterns only. Now, where would we use a tap like this? Well, in SANS 1025 2.1, part 1, section 5.3, it tells us that a terminal water fitting installed outside any building other than a residential dwelling shall incorporate a self-closing device or have a removable handle for operating purposes or be capable of being locked to prevent unauthorized use or be of a demand type that limits the quantity of water discharge in each operation. So typically as if you have outside of a building which has got public access which is not monitored you would have a hose tap there and be able to remove the handle to make it compliant to SANS legislations. The next one we're looking at is a demand tap and the demand head part will retrofit in any 15 millimeter heavy pattern tap that has not been reseated before. So the top left you can see there the person is busy reseating the tap and next to it is a reseating tool in case you have a query as to what that looks like. It is to be able to clean up the seat due to any pitting or anything like that. If this has been done you cannot use the demand head part in there because it has then lowered the seat area and the depth of the head part is very specific. You cannot change that so then it will not work. A demand head part does exactly what the name says. It gives you water on demand. So if the user keeps pushing the handle down, the water will continue flowing while he is holding it and thus it is a hold open function. We see that in SANS 1025 2.1 again it says unless otherwise required ablution areas that have a battery of more than three wash and basins or showers shall be provided with a metering or demand type tap or metering type showers. Now you wouldn't use a demand tap at a basin where you're going to be washing your hands because it's very difficult to wash your hands while you are keeping the tap depressed with one hand. So it is not very practical. It is fine in basins or areas where it is solely for drinking water, but you would rather put a metering tap in there. Some fault finding on the demand taps. If the head part does not seat properly or doesn't screw in properly, it could be, as we said, that the body has been reseated then you'd have to check the body and measure the face to seat length 21 millimeters to see if it has been if it has been you know you cannot use a demand head part on there it could also be that the body has got a different size it's not a 15 millimeter heavy pattern the next one we're looking at is then the metering tap where you push down the handle and once you let the handle go then the tap will give you a metered amount of water and as we saw just now in SANS 10252 this would be ideal then for ablutions where you have three or more basins or showers next to each other. The next one we're looking at then is our quarter turn head part and this is typically used in medical taps it is called a quarter turn because the handle only moves through an arc of 90 degrees while you are busy make, uh, setting the flow of the water. It does not have rubber seals inside. It has ceramic discs that turn on each other. So you have to make sure that there is no dirt in the water, that you have an inline strainer in place. Your quarter turn head part or head part 21 will retrofit also into all your 15mm heavy pattern taps 
where it has not been reseated. So it's the same ruling as for demand heads because that distance is very critical. You can also only use this head part where the spindle is in a vertical position as shown in the picture for a pillar tap and the handle moves through a horizontal arc. This is due to the fact that the handle is heavy and if you had to have it protruding sideways then it would start drooping and either opening or closing itself. Some fault finding were there. Again the head part does not screw in or doesn't seat it could be the wrong head part or the wrong body and it could also be that it has been reseated question is why is the majority of medical type mixes featuring a downward sloping spout or a spout being lower than the water inlet supply this is so that you have a self draining spout and there is never any water left in the spout to be able to uh, cause infectious diseases. So in any medical tap or mixer, it would have a downward sloping spout. The electronic taps or the Cobratron range, you know they are sensor taps, so that they have infrared sensors, so when they detect that there's something in front of them, then they would open and the water would start flowing. A full list of spares is available for anything you want to do whether it be from the solenoid valve to shut off the water or the sensor there are different ones for the different taps your remote for setting them you can even get extension cables three meter extension cables you're not to extend the tap from the power supply further than 10 meters so you could use three three meter extensions plus the one meter that is on the taps lead already and that is the maximum distance due to voltage and friction losses in your wires there. Your power supply will either be a battery or a transformer box or a transformer with a battery backup inside there. We recommend that any public installation would be with a transformer box or a backup transformer unit because people tend not to do any maintenance so batteries run flat and then it is a frustration when the taps do not work. A solution to this is the grower power box. We see it's got a box underneath the basin so the water flows through there to the mixer and there's a little turbine inside there which keeps the super capacitor charged up so that you do not have to change the batteries. If you haven't used the battery for or the tap for a hundred hours, there is a little bit of a battery that then just will kick start it again and then off you go. So it is not completely maintenance free. There is a battery that has to be changed from time to time, but while the water is flowing, it is keeping your super capacitor charged. So it's perfect for public areas. You can also have it as in the previous picture just in the cold but this one here is for blended water so you could have the water blending before the time and then the blended water going through the power box and that is just another option there if we have a look at the fault finding water does not flow or valve does not shut off first of all check the power the batteries if it does not flow, if it does not activate, it could be that there's not enough power left in the batteries to open the solenoid valve and then it will not work. It could also be that your tap switches itself on and off or does not switch off and it could be that it's in front of a mirror because it sees itself and thinks that there's something in the way and then it would switch itself on again. So as we said, it could be the battery is low. Have a look at the red light in the sensor. If it does not flash, then there is no battery at all. Or the range has been set so short that it doesn't see you yet. You're still too far away from it. If something is in front of the mixer, it does go into a security mode or a shutdown mode. 
so that it does not waste water so if it for 90 seconds has seen something in front of it and no change then it will switch off and go into a lockout mode you'd have to reset the uh, take the battery off drain the power put it back on and then it will reset itself it could be that the range is set too long and hence that it sees things the whole time So if the red light in the sensor flashes once when the user steps within the sensor range it could be that the connector between the electronic unit and the solenoid is disconnected. Just make sure that all the wires are connected properly. It could be that there is dirt or scale on the solenoid valve and it does not switch off. Then you'd have to open up the solenoid valve and clean that. It could also be that the bypass valve is plugged because of dirt. Once again, open it up and clean it. If your water pressure is too high, higher than 6 bar, it can also be that the tap doesn't have a chance to flow properly. This bypass valve is filling up too soon and you'd have to then make sure that you reduce the pressure in that section of your installation. Any installation, domestic or otherwise, shouldn't be higher than 600 kPa to all your terminal points. If it does not shut off, once again, as we said, it could be dirt, clean it. could be that the sensor has been damaged. Sometimes people use a, an abrasive cleaning material and that then scratches the lens and it cannot see the infrared signal coming back and then it will not work. The question then is, will a normal license and accredited plumber be allowed to install an electronic product? Because normally plumbers are not allowed to do electrical work, but yes, they can very much do this because it is not high voltage, it's low voltage, it is nine volt, so it is no problem, it is plug and play, any plumber can do this installation. Rough brass garden taps, these have a rising spindle and you can see the head parts over there, the 15mm heavy pattern being the 25RB, the 20mm is the S-26RB and the 15mm light pattern is S-28. If you are not sure how the heavy pattern and the light pattern sizing works, there is a module specifically on taps and mixes which explains this it has a rising spindle as i said and around that there used to be a gland nut so the 20 millimeter heavy pattern still has a gland packing that you may need to tighten from time to time if water starts leaking past there but the others now have a double o-ring seal and no maintenance is required on these so there you can actually see that the spindle has lifted up as you open and close hence the terminology rising spindle Here you can see in the picture it has now made it clear so there is your gland and the question is what is the function of the gland and we've mentioned it before if there is still a little bit of a gap like you can see on the left hand side picture between the nut hex and the body of the head part it can still be tightened up so if it leaks you just nip it up slightly it will collapse the gland up against the spindle and make sure that it seals again and that is all you need to do we then move to single lever mixers we have the more popular one is your 35 millimeter. You have the top one is your raised base. Then you have the flat base. The diameter is the same, but you can see that the one has got a raised bottom. It's only got two O-ring seals there. The third O-ring seal is around the body of the cartridge, whereas the other one has three seals underneath. You'd have to have a look and see what is inside your mixer, but just be aware that there are two different types. You can't just go to the shop and buy a 35 millimeter cartridge the chances are that it's not going to fit inside your mixer the bottom one is also a 35 millimeter cartridge but it has some extra features it has that red 
limiting ring so that you can limit how far it goes to the hot water side to make sure you always get blended water it's just a bit of a safety feature if you have old people people with arthritis or children in the home also on the square shank that the handle fits onto you'll see that there is an adjustable screw and that is a limiting screw so that you cannot open the tap fully so that if the water is splashing from your basin you can limit how far you open it and you prevent that splashing then. If a single lever mixer is leaking through the spout you'd most probably have to change the whole cartridge. You cannot just replace the o-rings at the bottom, it's not the o-rings that are leaking it is the actual ceramic discs. If you are not working on a balanced water pressure or you haven't got strainers in it's quite possible that you are regularly going to need to change the cartridge so make sure you have a strainer fitted and also that you have balanced hot and cold water to all your mixing points if you do not have enough hot or cold water coming out make sure your angle valve is fully open it could also be that one of your flexible hoses has got a kink in it so have a look under the base and if it isn't a nice gradual curve to the tube if it's got a kink in it that's most probably what is going to be causing it not to flow properly just a quick one if it's leaking through the outlet again it's a damaged cartridge replace the cartridge if it's leaking from the body it could be that the o-ring around the side of the cartridge is faulty it is leaking there replace the o-ring or tighten up the cartridge if there's insufficient hot or cold have a look for any dirt blocking the lines but also it could just be that the angle regulating valve is not fully open if it is not diverting from the bath to the shower or under tile mixer with a diverter it could be that there is dirt in there or a damaged diverter seal. The question on a single lever mixers what type of cartridge would generally be used when using a sink or a single lever mixer? On a zinc, on this one that is pictured here, it would be normally a, sh a shorter or the flat base cartridge but to be able to know exactly what is in there you'd have to open up your mixer and have a look. The next one we're looking at is thermostatic mixers. The grower turbostat has got a very fast reaction time that is 0.3 of a second instead of 0.6 as normal in any other one so the reaction time is much faster. It also has a 432 degree turn on the uh, cartridges or on the uh, elements so that it takes a nice gradual setting on there. The mixers also have the grower cool touch which means that the hot water side of the mixer never gets so hot that you will burn yourself. It should never get more than about 38 degrees Celsius there. Your thermostatic mixers normally come factory preset at 38, 38 degrees Celsius which is your comfortable setting. You can override it if you need to but it has got a non-hold open feature so that even if the cold water fails you will not, not burn yourself there. Some of the thermostatic mixer fault finding that we'll be looking at is your valve is hunting from hot or cold. There's insufficient or no flow of water. The water does not get hot enough. There's water hammer or there is some water leaking through the end of the cartridge. So then if the valve is operating and it's ranging from hot and cold, it's hunting backwards and forwards, it could be that your feed is incorrect, your hot and cold has been swapped around, it could also be that the cartridge has become faulty. But first of all, make sure that your hot and cold is coming from the right side of the mixers and then make sure that you are getting enough hot water coming through. If you've got insufficient uh, flow of water it could be that the inline strainers are blocked, it could be that the shower heads 
or the mixer itself is blocked it could be that it's not the fault of the thermostatic mixer at all it could be that your stopcocks and line are partially closed make sure that they are completely open and set correctly if the water is not warm enough it could be that it hasn't been set properly calibrated if it has always worked properly and it now started you may need to look at the maintenance of that the cartridge may have become faulty or o-rings are damaged if you are getting water hammer while opening and closing your terminal position your terminal fittings it will be that your piping is loose or there could be air trapped inside the pipeline on a new installation it could also mean that you have excessive water speeds and also that your feeds have been reversed so it, the valve is trying to open and close and it doesn't know which way to go really if the valve is leaking through the vent in the cartridge your cartridge has become faulty and you need to change and put in a new cartridge so a quick question then at which side of the Cobra KD 2.204 pictured on the left hand side should you plumb the cold water supply cold water supply always is closest to the temperature adjustment knob ladies and gentlemen thank you for your attention and if you have any more questions or you're not sure about something please feel free to contact our after sales support department on 0861 21 21 21 once again thank you for your attention